Greetings fellow Conquerors and welcome, this is Darkfire Slide and today I'll be going over my picks for the top 10 most frustrating game mechanics in EU4. These are mechanics in the game that work against the player and have caused feelings of anger, frustration, and resentment both for me and my own experience and from what I've seen from the community and other EU4 players and on the forums. So without further ado, let's get frustrated. Number 10, Forts. For any staunch supporters of the new fort system, I'm not just talking about the new ones here. Whether talking about the current system of extremely expensive forts protecting large tracts of land, or the old system of needing to siege every last province, forts and sieges can be frustrating. Many troops often die in the process, and smaller stacks can often get sniped by death blobs while you detach them to take less attrition. This is especially frustrating when you lose troops when you were so close to finishing a siege. Disease outbreaks are fairly frustrating as well. And we all know that one Ford that was at 91% and simply refused to finish. Number 9. The Internal Conflicts Disaster Disasters are a way of punishing players who are doing ill-advised behavior. The Religious Turmoil Disaster, for example, is a way of discouraging people from trying to change their religion, or encourage adopting early reforms in the West, and as such, this disaster has a significant purpose. Internal conflicts, on the other hand, is frustrating for a number of reasons. While it's not as bad as it used to be, the fact that it triggers on negative one stability and requires at least zero stability can be frustrating if you've just cored something. In older times, you had to raise your stability to plus one, which, if you didn't have enough admin because of a bad leader, Leader, ensure that you would get the disaster. This is compounded by monthly progress being incurred by having units below 100% army maintenance. And then there's the disaster itself. You lose more stability, gain unrest, and random rebels start spawning across your nation. And to stop the disaster? You need even more stability, the cost of which is raised by plus 50%, so you lose even more admin points, all from a disaster that has the most generic name possible. Thankfully, you can take measures to stop this disaster from happening, which is why it isn't higher on the list. Number 8, Inflation. When you first start the game as a nation in 1444 that has access to a gold mine, you might think that you've been given a great gift. And at first, you have. And then the inflation events roll in. Before long, you're losing 10% of your income and paying 10% more across the board. And the only way to reduce it is to spend your precious admin points, pay for an advisor, or take an entire idea group just to reduce it. And there are very few events that lower inflation. One such event actually costs stability to lower inflation by a mere point. The other choice? Gain three more inflation. It's something that seems so harmless at first, but can quickly spiral out of control without care and potentially ruin your economy. Number seven, westernization. People who love playing outside of Europe, the so-called rest of the world nations, will understand this one. To westernize, you need to either border a western core or conquer a western province. If that province isn't seven techs ahead of you, by the way, then it doesn't count, and you'll have to go for another war. Westernizing itself causes a negative three hit to stability and plus five unrest across the country. As well, westernizing will likely result in event spawn rebels, loss of army tradition, loss of prestige, and loss of monarch points on top of the ones you're already spending on westernization. And even once you do westernize, it usually costs so many monarch points that recovery is often difficult, if not impossible, depending on how early you manage to westernize. There are actually some arguments that westernization is pointless in a lot of situations, especially with the right national ideas and idea groups to lower tech costs. Either way, it's a frustrating mechanic that makes playing outside of Europe a painful proposition in the long game. Number 6. Monarchies Yep, the most common form of government in the game is also the most frustrating. You can be doing extremely well in the game, winning war after war with endless prestige and power projection, when suddenly your heir dies and your 60-year-old king doesn't know what to do with himself. That terrifying alert appears. Personal union on monarch death, and suddenly the independence of your nation is at risk, completely and totally out of your control. Add negative one stability to every monarch death, and almost completely random stat generation for each monarch that will likely reign for at least 40 years, and you have a recipe for the worst government type in the game. It's a shame becoming a republic is so hard. Number 5. Attrition. One of the coolest parts of EU4 is that you have a pool of manpower to build troops that makes losses in battle have weight to them. Unfortunately, most of the time, what is going to kill your troops is not epic combat, but rather a slow ble bleed of attrition as they besiege enemy lands. For a long time in EU4, there was something called on-arrival attrition, which made unit stacks take a full tick of attrition every time they entered a new enemy province. This was especially deadly in Russian provinces with 5% attrition, and this is after they made a cap of 5%. Sometimes it was even worse than that, depending on the size of the stack in question. The sheer amount of attrition incurred often leads to the controversial merc spam, or even strategies which incorporate 
infantry stacks, consi mercenary stacks consisting only of infantry. While this mechanic is necessary to prevent constant war, it is nonetheless frustrating. Number four, corruption. A recently added mechanic, corruption is gained whenever you're coring something, have military technology too far ahead of the other techs, have a lack of religious unity, and sometimes random events. Corruption takes a fair amount of money to reduce, sometimes even ridiculous amount if your development is high enough, go and check the forums if you don't believe me, and not reducing it means a high monarch point cost for nearly everything. It was implemented as a means to punish overzealous conquerors, though its efficacy is highly debated among the EU4 community. While I'm not taking a side here in this video, it is nonetheless a highly frustrating mechanic just by the sheer amount of outcry from the community itself. Number 3. Random Stability Hits There are a few phrases that will send almost any EU4 player into a fit of rage. Warriors do not read books. We needed a shakeup. Our king is dead. Comet sighted. These all have the same effect lose one stability, and no amount of planning or preparation can help you here. The game has arbitrarily decided that it's time that you lost some stability. From a mechanical perspective, this stops players from buying stability and resting on their laurels. At the same time, to lose something so expensive in administrative points for virtually no reason other than the old random number generator, or RNGesus, is an extremely frustrating and somewhat unfair mechanic at times depending on the situation. If only those warriors could read. Number 2. The AI. Okay, so admittedly the AI is less of an actual game mechanic and more of an additional player's issue. Nonetheless, the AI is an extremely necessary part of the game, which is why it's so frustrating when France just sits there with his 80,000 troops and refuses to help you win your war against the Commonwealth. Sometimes issues like this persist even after you reload a save, since sometimes kickstarting the AI will make them work, but sometimes not. And why the hell did you start that war, France? How could I possibly help you against the entirety of the HRE when I only have 16k troops? What is actually wrong with you? Why would you cross a river into a mountain? These kinds of situations really speak for themselves. Now it's time for some honorable mentions. For this we have two. First, we have terrain combat penalties. Um, nobody really likes to lose troops for virtually no reason and crossing rivers and going into woods is actually painful. And the other is the uh, problems with the Bailiff event that in the past made you lose, made you choose between either losing 33 prestige or one stability, and virtually made keeping prestige high impossible depending on what country you were playing and how often that event happened. These days, I think, thinkably, it's only 10 or 15 prestige, which is a lot more manageable and makes the choice a lot easier. And now, on to our number one. Number one. Loaded Combat Dice Rolls In EU4's combat, dice rolls represent differences in, in the luck of the troops fighting on both sides, with a number from 0 to 9. This seems reasonable until you start watching the dice rolls themselves. While there is no conclusive evidence to say that dice rolls are weighted against the player, there is nothing more frustrating than fighting a, a pivotal battle in a war, only to watch your amazing general somehow manage to roll three zeros in a row, and have your enemy roll an 8, 9, and 8, resulting in a crushing defeat for your clearly superior army. There's nothing you can do to affect the dice rolls, really, and it, and it is the most luck-based mechanic in EU4, and it rarely, if ever, favors the player when it matters. At least, that's what we're all thinking after losing a battle like that. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give a video and a like and like and comment with your own frustrating experiences. And of course, be sure to subscribe to see more strategy content in the future, and I'll see you all on the next one.